welcome. This is a 6.5 in the booth, coming to you live from Mobile World Congress. We're on the four years from now pavilion, and I'm joined by Tom Trill, the CEO of Qualix. Hey, Tom, welcome to the show. Yeah, thanks, Stephen. Good to see you. The show is crazy this year. We're not, what is it, 95,000 attendees? Yeah, 95 is up by 10 or 15 for the year. Fantastic opportunity for some of those startups and sort of Series B companies to get some profile at the event. But before we dive into that, position your role and tell us a little bit about Qualinx and we'll dive in from there. Yeah, great, thanks Stephen. Yep. So uh, Qualinx was uh, spun out at TU Delft in the Netherlands about uh, 2015, late 2015 timeframe. Okay. A couple of PhD students and they broke through a physics barrier when it comes to digital RF. It was a 40 year old physics barrier and that was part of their thesis. Um, we have broad IP coverage and broad patent coverage uh, for the invention. Um, it's generally called Digital RF, and uh, we are now productizing all of that IP, and we're headed into our third tape out, which will be our production product for a release uh, towards the end of the year. And we've got the technology with us. Tell us a little bit about what you guys have done, because it's we've been tracking you now for just over a year. Yep. We met here last year breakthrough technology that the team has developed, cutting edge tech. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, great, thanks. Yeah, so we're on a very advanced node for um, RF technology. Mm -hmm. And you're right, it is hard to actually make it out from the dev kit here because our physical size is really competitive. We're headed down towards like the six millimeter squared uh, form factor. Um, and we have an exceptionally efficient power profile. Um, the source of the power efficiency comes from uh, the intrinsic um, characteristics of digital RF, the underlying IP, um, the architecture and the process node. With all those combined, we have a very uh, generational competitive advantage in both uh, die size, performance, power, um, and a, a very competitive cost base for a startup, which is critical. So position where the use case is. We've spent a bunch of time over the last year talking about some of those use cases. But I think the listeners are going to find that fascinating. Tell us a little bit more how the technology is actually going to make it into devices and things that we see out there in the marketplace. Yeah, well, yeah. I'm very much a market driven guy. And what I'm about to say goes a little bit against my training in nature. <laughs> um, and I We're pushing you. We're pushing you. <laughs> I've, I've tried to be market driven in terms of uh, use cases, but it boils down to three applications mm -hmm. uh, positioning, timing, and tracking. Okay. They're the broad applications that we address. And underneath each one of those, there's a, just a plethora of different segments and uh, end user markets. Uh, some prime examples would be in terms of uh, timing, smart cities. You yeah. have to have precise timing at every intersection to make it all work. Mm -hmm. And that comes from satellites. Yeah. Um, uh, tracking, asset trackers, head trackers, Et cetera, et cetera. And that's where that form yeah. factor comes in, right? Just getting it so small opens up some of those use cases. Yeah, yeah, you're right on. Um, and the total, the, the value proposition of the physical size and the power profile uh, really impacts the end user's uh, design philosophy. They can shrink the design um, to have a smaller battery and get the same battery life out of their end product using our technology. We're as much as 10x lower power than some of the competing solutions. And some of the things we've been talking about over the last year, the positioning piece, some of the use cases there, that power footprint really makes a difference in the actual device. Tell us a little bit more. Yeah, yeah. So we've uh, benchmarked against a lot of different uh, competitors and a lot of different use cases. When it, uh, when it comes to power, everybody talks about low power, ultra low power. And that's a wonderful uh, baseline. But for Qualinx, we go beyond thinking about ultra low power in the purity of power. We talk about power optimization. Not every use case needs low power. Yeah. They need to optimize the power to performance um, behavior of the device in situ, in the application. Yeah. So we really view uh, our power profile as being application driven. And you can adjust uh, the performance um, of the device itself um, to, to, to be fit to purpose. And then the power falls out from there. So tell us about the case, so where you guys are from a journey point of view, there's some hard engineering, 
some patent work, there's kind of breakthrough technology. Maybe frame that for us a little and how that's got us to where we are. This is a series two tape out from you guys, more to come, but tell us a little bit about kind of how that pure R&D has found its way into what we're seeing today. Yeah, well, you know semiconductors, you've been around yeah. a long time. It's not for the faint of heart. Yeah, um, it's, it's yeah. true R&D yeah. at the cutting edge. Oh, it is, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we're right there. Um, this is our second tape out. Yep. And it was good enough, and actually so good, that we decided to turn it into our dev kit. Okay. And we gave a release of that dev kit about a year ago yep. to strategic customers. Um, what's that reaction been? Yeah. Oh, it's a complete validation of our power claims, yep. um, which is very important for you know, our stakeholders, our investors, our, even our employees. You know, a morale boost that several different OEMs come back and say, yeah, this is really competitive from a power base. And that's vital, that validation. Those guys are going to be doing that type of testing. Yeah. That speaks volumes to where you guys are from a pure R&D point of view and the progress of the business, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and we, by doing that about a year ago, uh, we knew we were about a year away from the pre-production tape out, yeah. which is happening right now. And that allows our customers really open up a qual slot and for us to identify the intercept points in their new product uh, introductions. So, you know, everything is lining up reasonably well for us for a product launch in the second half. I was going to say, yeah. we've been tracking the progress. Tell us as much as you can, obviously, what that next sort of maybe six, nine, 12 months looks like. Yeah, yeah. So um, product launch in the second half. Okay. Um, and mass production ramp will be driven by those customer adoption rates. Yeah. Uh, somewhere between the Q4, Q1 timeframe, Q125. Yeah. So I expect when we're back here next year, we'll be in mass production. We'll be recording another yeah. video talking about our little success. Uh, yeah, I hope so. So yeah. for our listeners, if we can get just maybe three takeaways, give, you, give me the sort of qualling story and what you guys have been doing in RF in those three punchy takeaways for the listeners. Yeah, great, um, thank you. So digital RF, what that really means is about 80% of any analog RF radio is now migrated over to digital CMOS. Okay. And you get all of the benefits from digital CMOS as a result. Yep. We know what they are. They're power, intrinsically lower power, smaller form factor, and scalability. Yep. Really important. Um, secondly, I talked about uh, uh, application optimized power. And that comes from uh, the, the inherent and intrinsic reconfigurability characteristics of our architecture, meaning that you're not locked into uh, one or two modes. You have full control over how you drive our receiver. Yep. Um, and therefore, whatever power budget you have, you can optimize our chip to fit in. That's crucial. Uh, and, and scalability. You know, so, and that comes in two uh, forms. When we think about our architecture, firstly, uh, we can shrink. We have a generational advantage uh, because we are CMOS based. We can yeah. continue to shrink, but also more importantly, uh, we're digital RF that enables software defined radios. And a software defined radio will eventually replace a hardware re redesign cycle that most of our customers uh, require nowadays. Um, so by virtue of designing those in once, you get to um, re redeploy that same hardware design through software upgrades. Yeah. yeah. So Tom, we're starting to wrap up. You've got a busy show. There's been, whilst we were setting up, the traffic here has yeah. been fantastic. What would be that one key takeaway that you'd want the listeners to get from our interview today? And then we'll wrap up. Yeah, so future proof of design, um, design hardware once, and then reconfigure and redeploy through software. Well, that's Tom, it's been great to chat. I always enjoy engaging. Well, I'm looking forward already to next year to catch up. You've been watching us here on the Four Years From Now Pavilion at Mobile World Congress. Please click and subscribe and do all those things to help the algorithm. And we'll see you next time. Thank you very much for watching.